Hey friends, today I'm Gardening with Creekside. We're gonna have a little fun, do things a little differently. We are going to plant this whole little collection of pots that I have here uh, beside my garden shed, and we are gonna have some fun dooming plantings. Now, the garden shed, which used to be a chicken coop, turned into my garden shed and now has gone back to a chicken coop because the girls have had to have a temporary home in here because we have not gotten the other coop up yet. So. I know a lot of people are asking about how the chickens are doing. They're doing great. So if you hear peeping, they're just back there just having a hi-ho time behind me. That would be really fun to do this collection of blue shaded pots right here beside the now old chicken coop. I've had these pots for forever. I got them. It's called Ollie's. It's a discount place they sell a little bit of everything. And in the spring, they do really nice um, ceramic glaze pottery. And I have had it for, I mean, literally like years. Clearly, I love the cobalt blue. I have already planted in here an Atlas rose who is blooming beautifully and smells divine. So I have an Atlas rose. Then I have the, this is a Spanish lavender and it is in a standard form, a topiary form. She is in a container by herself. And then we have the double white, Super Bell's double white. This is the improved version, new version from Proven Winners. It is a 2024 introduction. Obviously what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant one plant per pot and use this as a collection together. And we're gonna do some things that maybe you don't think of to put in pots because I want this to work together as a cohesive grouping Instead of doing like a big container and putting a bunch of these different plants in there, we're going to put each plant in its own pot and then use a collection together to make an arrangement. That way, if we have different water needs, we can handle those water needs with no problem and gives me different heights, colors, textures, and everybody has plenty of room to grow. Putting compost in the bottom of the pot is a little trick that I read about from, I think it was Fine Gardening um, several years ago, and it works beautiful. So what we do is we put the compost in the bottom one third of your container. I use the black gold today, and then you put your potting mix on top of that. So of course we use the Proven Winners um, potting mix great wonderful it drains really well for me i love it we're going to plant the plants in there because you put the compost in the bottom one it helps retain some moisture because containers obviously drain a lot faster right this gets full hot afternoon sun we are blessed with some cloudy weather today so therefore i am in the shade but it does get hot afternoon sun and i this is not going to be on irrigation so i have to hand water this so for me to retain some moisture is a good thing also, it is a whole nother layer of nutrients. So once those roots will hit that compost, they have a whole nother food source available to them. We're gonna plant them and then we're gonna come back with our land and sea compost to top dress. Now this is just a personal preference. People have asked me about why we use black gold over land and sea back and forth. They are both excellent, excellent products. The land and sea can be very hard for some people to find. Black gold is a little bit easier because it's found in your Ace Hardware stores. It is a wonderful product and we really enjoy using it. However, I am gonna top dress with my land and sea because it's darker. Um, the black gold compost can be a little light brown for me and I like the, dark, the darker look of the land and sea. So we're gonna top dress with land and sea today. Now, what we're gonna do is, first things first, is um, putting your plants with your pot. So, what are we gonna use today? Well, I have two kind of, uh, really three plants that are gonna get bigger. One, we have the Graceful Grasses Purple Fountain Grass. This is a very beautiful, dark purple grass that will have a very vigorous root system. So, we are going to put it in the largest pot. We're gonna put that right there in the middle. As these plants grow and maybe some of them get bigger, we can rearrange and shuffle some plants, but that's okay. So my grasses is gonna have my most vigorous root system. Therefore, I'm going to put it into the largest pot. Next, we have the Rockin' Deep Purple Salvia. Now, 
Right now, it is only in a grande size container, right? Well, this plant will get nice and big, multi-branching, nice, rich, purple flowers on it that will be a nice comparison, companion planting rather, with my lavender. So I put it in my next biggest container that I have left. So it will go right here, right beside the Atlas Rose. It will be beautiful. Next on the list that we are going to plant is this beautiful, this is a Cedar Rapids. And this is actually where we're gonna think a little different. This is a false cypress. It is gonna go into the far container on the other side of the purple fountain grass in front of the Super Bell's double white. Now, false cypress, this Cedar Rapids can get, um, it's a tree, and it can be 30 feet tall, 12 to 15 feet wide. Now, clearly, this is not going to be long term in a container, but our friends at Spring Meadow Nursery sent me three of them to kind of test out and they are in one gallon containers. And I thought, you know what, let's just try something different. Let's put it in a container, which would be about the equivalent to maybe a two or a three gallon container. So it's going to be moved up. So the Cedar Rapids will bring a whole different kind of texture to this, um, this plant grouping and it'll be just really fun and kind of different. Now, when this outgrows the container, which will probably be at the end of the season, like the roots will go all the way around, then I'm gonna pop it out of that container and then put it into the landscape. It can join the other two. I'm thinking the other two are gonna go somewhere near the chicken coop, the new chicken coop, but that will be fun to put those, um, that one in there. Next, that Brenna is keeping uh, safe for me, I have a really fun new petunia. Now, this petunia came to me as a gift from one of our um, sweet customers. And she had told me about some really fun different plants that she gets at her local farmer's market. She found this, this is Lime Royale Petunia, and it is a really fun, has ruffled edges on it, nice deep purple center, and then it kind of comes out to like a lime green on the outside with a little bit of purple lavender on the edges. Again, this little purple will pair beautifully with both the lavender and the salvia, so it is going to go in here. It'll be interesting to see the vigor on this plant. I have no clue how this plant is going to grow. It seems like it's going to be nice and tight, which will be really nice in this container. If it starts to outgrow the container, maybe I can find a bigger one, but we're going to, it's all an experiment here, people. And then finally, I have a little uh, tall skinny vase. We're going to put two of, this is the, going to be brand new for 2024. This is the Super Bell's Double Smitten Pink. It is a double caliber koa, a darker center with nice light, um, kind of a baby doll pink on the edge. This will pair really nicely with my Super Bell's white because that is a double and then this is a double. I have two of them. I could probably very easily get away with only putting one in this container because it's small, but I had two left. So I was like, well, go big or go home. So we're gonna put them in there together and um, plant them as one and let them fill out. So without further ado, all I'm going to do is just plop these plants out of the containers and then put them into the, uh, the bigger containers. And yeah, I'll meet you back here in just a minute.
Okay guys, so today's project is a complete. Uh, it was a simple project, pretty quick and easy, very painless to do, but it's going to be a lot of fun to watch this whole collection of pots and plants grow and develop as the season progresses. We have got shrubs, perennials, and annuals all here together. My shrubs, of course, will be my Atlas Rose. That is very happy, very healthy, um, full of blooms. The thing with your rose is you do want to come in there and deadhead. So once your flower flowers are gone then go in there and just snip them back that way you, the plant puts more energy into more growth and not cry, trying to create those rose hips so at last rose beautiful shrub then the cedar rapids false cypress is in there as well it's going to be really fun and interesting to see how that one grows because this is brand new uh, for me and out in the market i don't believe it's even on, available on the market until next year so we will see how it does now yes it will be a giant tree but for this season it will do quite well in that container and then my perennial with my spanish lavender it had a gorgeous flush of blooms early on in the season season they're still on there but it is putting on tons of new growth this is a new one for me as well so we're just gonna you know see how she does but she's already started blooming again just a fun different kind of whimsy to this right being a nice little standard topiary form and then we have the texture of the purple fountain grass and then our color comes from both the super bells double white the new super bells pink that will be out available next year my sweet gift of a petunia from a friend and then the rockin deep purple salvia that all kind of plays in here together nice fun cool colors it goes with the garden as well that is right uh, in directly in front of me and everything just kind of cohesively goes together all i have to do is keep this watered and then my flowering annuals i will use my proven winners water soluble fertilizer on them uh, once every honestly like two weeks that'll probably be about as good as i can get to keep them nice and dark and green and just full of beautiful flowers if it gets too long and leggy i can just come in there and trim them up and they will do great so just think kind of outside the container outside the box when you're thinking about putting your plants together i know that some folks have a really hard time planting directly in the ground maybe you don't have a ground maybe you're in an apartment or a condo and you don't have a, a garden with soil put your pots together use a beautiful collection of pots whatever pots you have right that's the fun and the whimsy they don't have to be all matchy matchy in these designer pots no use what you have heck you're talking to a girl who uses a wheelbarrow and a grill for a container anything if it holds soil and it has a drainage hole it can be used as a planter so just think outside of some traditional pots and just have fun putting your plants together if you have um, voles or mold, yeah, voles that eat your plants, pots are a great way to go. You can still have your beautiful flowers. They're just not in the ground where their roots get eaten. Um, and so whatever the problem may be in your garden, if you have a hard time planting directly in the landscape, put them in containers and put them together. You can have a beautiful assortment of colors and textures all season long. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.